Hey guys, I thought I'd add one more uh, free video to this series here for you. Uh, now, what I want to share with you is how I can basically talk to my different tags a little separately. So as an example, I have this tag here, which is my H1 tag. So let's say as an example, this is going to be a logo. So what I can do is I create a rule specifically for H1 when H1 is inside of header. So how would I do that? I select the tag and I make a rule. In this particular case, I do want H1 tag inside of header. So as an example, I could make this uppercase and I can make this, let's make this purple. So therefore it's going to be uppercase and purple. And I could do the same thing with the H2 tag. So the H2 tag, select the tag, make a rule. So we're going to make the H2 tag, let's make that slightly smaller. So we're going to make the font size 0.9M. Now what it's going to do, it's going to take the existing size and make it smaller. Okay. Now in addition to that, let's actually put a little bit more space between the letters. This is our tagline or a catchphrase it could be. So we're going to go to category block and letter spacing. We're going to set to 0.05 M spaces. Notice the default M spaces. So if I do the apply option, I get something like this happening. Make a change, save a change. Now this next step is for search engine purposes. This is an H1 tag, this is an H2 tag. An H2 tag would typically follow an H1 tag, but what I want to do is benefit from the new HTML5 resources, header tags, H tags called an H group tag. How do I do that? In order to affect these tags, I select the tags. Then I hit Command T and wrap it inside an H group tag, simply by typing in H group. Now this is part of an H group tag. Now we could choose to make a rule for this. So I can put this in an orange background or whatever I want to do, but we're not going to do that in this particular case. Now the other thing I want to share with you too is that I can set my default parameters for those default sections. So what do I mean by that? Well, as an example, the body tag is now dictating the entire site of 1M which is equal to 16 pixels by default. Okay, so what I can do here is say my section tag, I want to make my section tag in all of its content, whether it's an H1 tag, an H2 tag, etc., etc., I want to make that smaller. So I'm going to come here and say 0.9 EM and hit apply. So that's going to make it smaller than its default value. Let's make this smaller still, 0.8M, and hit apply, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so it's automatically going to make that content for that particular, the parent tag, why is it affecting the, why is it affecting the article tag? The article tag is part of the section tag. It's a parent child relationship. Now, the way that this should be laid out here, the wrapper tag should be on top right there wrapper header. So exactly how this is built is exactly how the rules should flow. Now we don't have a rule for the footer tag so let's create a rule for the footer tag. So I select the tag and I make a rule. In order to affect the tag I need to select the tag. So I'm going to create a rule for that particular tag. So I select footer, I come here. Now here's what I want to be able to do. I want footer to have a certain height and I want the footer content to be vertically be in the center of the page. So how can I do that? Well, I can hit OK and rather than make the box height say 25 pixels high, we're going to make the line height 25 pixels high. What that's going to do for us is that's going to vertically put the type in the center of the box, vertically in the center. In addition to that, category block, we're going to align this to the center of the box, left and right alignment. And I get something like this happening. Now, what I want to have happen based on these choices, first of all, the font size should be considerably smaller. So we're going to make that maybe 0.7 M spaces. And we're going to make our type white because we want to make the background color be a dark orange color, maybe something like this. Now, if you get the apply option, it's not going to behave correctly because what has to happen based on these choices is the footer content has to clear 
the floats that it's below. So up here I have floats. I have all these are set to left float. So footer has to clear the left float. By clearing the left float, is going to put the footer tech at the bottom. And that's how it's going to line into place. Okay, so if you're putting a footer tech at the bottom and you want to anchor everything, I'm going to put this on the bottom here, then footer needs to have a clear left. Now, if you have left and right floats over on top of it, then footer would have to clear both. But in this particular case, we can just deal with that as it is. Okay, now what I want to share with you is that if you go to my Udemy videos, so here we are on the Udemy website. So what I'm sharing with you is you can get this course, which is $129. I've been selling for $129. 197 people already signed up for this course. Read my reviews. I have tons and tons of great reviews. Now here's what happens. You sign up for this course for $49. In addition to that, you will get a free getting started course, which is 59 bucks. So for $49, now this is not $49 a month or $49 every year. This is a one-time lifetime fee of $49. In addition to that, I update my videos a few times a month. So ongoing training for $49 using my proven time-tested techniques. So hopefully you understand watching these free YouTube videos, how simple and enjoyable I make it. Support what I do. Okay, $49 gives you the $59 getting started course as well. So I will talk to you soon. I'll have a link at the bottom of this video that you can click and get this coupon discount. Thank you for your time. Carpe diem. My name is Robert.